It reminds me of your, those old uh, uh, um, what are those printers with the dot net? Yeah, dot matrix. I know. I dot net. Dot matrix. I was like, I knew there's dot something. What's what's that? Say it before he Jeff says it. Dot I, whatever. Dot dot something. Dot dot matrix. <laughs> oh, thank heavens. All right. I see us. And we're on the screen. All right. Yeah. Welcome to Talking Heads, everyone. Episode 193, your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm John. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday night or on the replay in podcast form over on Anchor.fm or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. If you've never seen the show before, we talk beer, we talk tech, we talk games, pop culture, entertainment, usually some Star Trek. All Super Chats are rad on the air, so long as I feel like it and they don't demonetize my channel. And we do drink alcohol on the show, and if you're drinking along with us, alcoholic or not, let us know in the chat and we'll give some shout outs as we go along. And if you want to join the super secret chat and the even more super secret after party, think about joining the Patreon or Floatplane. Links are both down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat with myself, John, Rhett, Steve, all the hosts from Talking Heads, and keep the conversation going with the awesome community that sits over there. Yes, it is an awesome community. Yes. One of the best. One of the best, if not probably the best. If you haven't witnessed Craft Computing After Dark yet, it's uh, it's about time you joined. Yes. Oh, it, it's it's so much fun. And even just the Discord itself. I mean, even if this show only has like 10% of what you like in the shows, the Discord probably has 100% of what you like. Yes. Uh, highly, highly recommend it. Checking it out. Like, it is a minimum, a minimum of only a dollar. So, I mean, if you go to a red box and rent a movie that's more expensive than joining for a month. So, yep. Yep. Join on there. Uh, you can directly ask me questions, uh, instead of like emailing my business inquiries account. And I have this problem with this server that you've probably never heard of. And I'm trying to use it in a way that it wasn't designed for. And can you help me? And no, oh, yeah. <laughs> No, I don't have time. Well, that's the beauty part of the Patreon, too, is because it's not just you. It's not just us. Right. There are hundreds of people just like us that have specialized experience in multiple fields. Yep. And so if one of us doesn't know something, there is a community in there that knows probably something. about. There's it. a community of people just like me, just without cameras. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, and it's not just tech. There's cars, there's media, there's entertainment, there's music. There's 3D there's printing. Trade, there's photography. There's yeah. food and beverage. There's a specific channel just for this area. Uh, you know, if you don't want to, it's a special chat. Yes. So lots and lots of cool places. All right. We've, uh, I think we've sold our souls enough <laughs> in the early goings of the show. Uh, John, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, tonight, I'm going to be drinking something kind of special. Um, our friend over uh, in across the pond, Andy on eTechnics, is uh, he, he tried some IPAs this past week and did not like them <laughs> and was complaining all over Twitter of how he just didn't understand how hops and brews and craft computing could drink the yeah. hoppy beers. So I even had, even had like Paul's hardware chiming in and yeah, exactly. <laughs> it I mean, was it great. Kinda, it kind of got pretty big. <laughs> um, so he was raving about all of the wonderful UK loggers that are out there. I took it upon myself today to go out and purchase one of these special UK loggers. Nice. And I could only find, other than, say, a Samuel Smith, this wonderful large bottle of kookery beer uh, <laughs> for about $3. And that's import. <laughs> yeah. So I will be having kookery beer, 4.7% uh, lager, the essence of Nepal. That doesn't make sense. Um, but okay. Do, do they need a globe by any chance? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I, I don't have high hopes, but this is what the UK has for longer. The UK version of the essence of Nepal tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm even Lord. putting it in a 
English pint. That way he can't complain that I'm using the wrong glassware. What's funny is I have an English pint glass for... <laughs> Hey, there we go. So <laughs> that's right. Um, oh, it, that's that's uh, an aroma. That that's, that's a beer. Bottle room. That's bottle room aroma. Oh, that uh, that's a wonderful smell. I know that mm. smell. Yeah. Um, well, I told John I didn't have anything too exotic tonight, and uh, I lied. Um, <laughs> so I I didn't want him to feel worse about himself or his life choices. Oh. Uh, and I wanted him to bear witness to it live on camera. So I went ahead and grabbed a Sierra Nevada trip in the woods. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is their barrel age series. This is the tequila uh, oh, barrel okay. age series. The, uh, the Atra Vez. Uh, ale brewed with lime and agave aged in tequila barrels. Should have told me. Yep. I, have I know you bottle. have that. I know you have this bottle. <laughs> there we go. So that's what that one looks like. Yeah, I love I love most of the trip in the wood. Yes. So this one's been in my fridge for probably about a year and a half. And so yeah, I it's, think I uh, have mine for about that time. Same time. Yeah. Now, you know what? Tonight, it just feels like the right night to open this one. I don't know why, but it has been uh, it's been a rough week around the house. Uh, pregnant wife, if uh by the anyway, way, I, I haven't announced I haven't announced on video yet. Uh, oh, yeah. By the by the way, uh, I will be a father for the third time sometime Thanksgiving ish, December ish. Congratulations! So, thank you, thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm sure everyone else in chat is probably saying the same thing, but you know, I can, I'm the only one to say it out loud. Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, no, we've known for quite a while. Obviously, if you know, we're only four and a half months away from the, <laughs> the due date. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now you guys know, know what it is. We do. Not going to tell you yet, though. Ah, okay, <laughs> okay. So, Haven't figured uh, out. I, I assume. I assume if it's a if it's a boy, it's going to be like Jack or Jim Bean or Daniel, something around that line. You, you know, I, I'm more. I'm more of like an Elijah. I'm, I'm more like <laughs> Elijah. Yeah. Elijah and a Craig. And yeah. then and then if it's if it's a girl, is it just vodka? Um, you know, I'm Martini. trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to sneak Xavier Patrick Ooh. by the wife. <laughs> uh, what was Xavier Patrick? What was the, the kid's well, you, name? Jean well, you Luke? got. You yeah, weren't, you weren't gonna go with John Luke. No, I, John Luke. I figured was too much, and 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 you're coming on too strong. But I figure yeah. Xavier Patrick uh, is is a nice dignified name. Uh, <laughs> I can call him X or Professor, uh, and go. or I can nickname him Jean Luc later on. You know, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Tiberius. Go with Tiberius. Yeah. No, I, I don't think we'll do Tiberius. No, that that's the worst. <laughs> we'll we'll just call him Jim Montgomery. Yeah, Montgomery. Ah. <laughs> what are what are some Klingon names? <laughs> <laughs> The Duras sisters. Yeah, Duras. What, what, what were what were, yeah, what were their names? Uh, Lusor and Bator. Yeah, there you go. There's some. There's some. I girl think. Names. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, Lusa, Lusa and Bator. Yeah, yeah. Lursa, Lursa, Lursa and Bator. Lursa it. and Bator. Yeah, I knew it would come back to me eventually. Um. Michael, thank you so much for the $10 donation. Congratulations to the baby shower. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I was just going to show off just how freakishly clear this beer is. I mean, like, your beer is actually clearer than my beer. Than your lager. Yeah. Right. My English right. lager. Oh, wait. Can, I wonder if it can see the... the There's the, the thumbnail. The, yeah. <laughs> see, I, oh, I have, you got your hops and brews glass. Yeah, nice. that's right. <laughs> Someone suggests Martok. <laughs> Tanagra is a very female name. <laughs> uh, I, I think I could go with Jadzia if it's a girl. There you go. That, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not a bad one. Um, I, I have snuck in uh, character names in the last two kids' names, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it's got to be like an obscure show that she has no idea what it is. And she's mm -hmm. like, yeah, let's put that in there. 
No, what's funny is uh, one of them, I got two names from the same show in. Oh, really? And it's one of her favorites, and she didn't catch it until late. <laughs> <laughs> until it was too late. Or it's like she had already fallen in love with it, and she goes... <laughs> that, that's where I got it from. Uh, you know what, Balana? You know what? You know what? I'm just... It, if it's a boy, I think just plain, simple Garrick. Garrick. Plain, simple Garrick. <laughs> that's a great one. That's a good one. Uh, I could get wanna, behind that. I, I could get behind that. I want to hear that on his wedding night. <laughs> like when the, uh, the the pastor like says his full name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone says Annika. No, I uh, can't do Annika because there's already, we have a, uh, I have a niece who's an Annika. Um, <laughs> Tanagra. Tanagra. Yeah, just name her seven of nine. D Darmok gets no love. Or, or uh, I said Darmok. Yeah. I, I no, think I said, did I say T Tanagra? I think or, you said Tanagra. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when the walls fell? Yeah. yeah. Shaka. Yeah. <laughs> Oh right. Uh, that's what that's what she, that's what Jeff said. Oh, Shaka. <laughs> when the wall fell. Anyway. When, when the walls fell. When the walls fell. Uh, uh, Chicote. <laughs> no. God no. no. You can name her shit. Yeah, the problem uh, is see, so it's interesting. So you could name a boy after liquor and it would sound manly. Uh -huh. But if you name a girl after liquor, you're basically setting her up to be like a stripper. I know. I mean, I, I mean, like they're gonna name her Chardonnay. Like, oh, yeah, God. yeah Martini. I, I, I said we are not using uh, days or months. We are not using drinks. So we we're, we're not going like sangria or uh, we're not doing gemstones. We're not doing okay. sapphire. Yeah. Uh, another, and and uh, my my test for girls' names is if you can precede it by. Please welcome to the stage. Exactly, yeah. It's a bad name. It's a yep, bad yep, name. Yep, exactly. Right. But the thing is, I'll see, like, like you said, you could probably go with Jim, Jack, or Elijah, and it's still like, eh, I right. named you after that, and it's totally right. fine. Yeah, hey, Eli Elijah's actually at the top of our, our boy list name. Uh, so. I, 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 I got it up there, so. Middle, not middle name Craig? <laughs> not middle name Craig, no, unfortunately. <laughs> You can always she goes, that hey, double. that sounds familiar. You can always do that double middle name. <laughs> yeah. Or or see if you can sneak in like. Uh, Just do a hyphen it uh, somewhere of something. Yeah, hyphen it somewhere or make an initial to where it's like MDF. Or yeah. <laughs> NCC. Yeah, <laughs> NCC. <laughs> That's his initial. So, yeah. <laughs> oh sure sapphire is okay for a video card but not your kid <laughs> uh have you seen sapphire ruby <laughs> i was gonna say it wasn't a very good graphics card either. <laughs> uh no like sapphire makes makes fine graphics cards uh they're they're some of the best amd cards you can get but uh yeah ha have you seen the old artwork of like sapphire ruby and and some mm. of the the mm. characters from back then i know what you're talking about yeah. i know what you're talking about yeah 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 I am not liking this beer. Uh, Rhett says, hurry up and ask the producer about the baby stuff I've been offering. <laughs> um, Rhett, uh, talk to me tomorrow morning because she did want a couple of things from you. So, yes. Uh, we'll see if we can hook up sometime. Uh, AJ, $5 donation. Thank you very much, AJ. Uh, zone defense time. Congrats. Adrian has a nice ring to it. Uh, no bias at all, I'm assuming. <laughs> Problem with Adrian is I. Adrian. Yep, that's, that's all I can think. Ever, as, yep. Everyone's like, ah, I got. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I just can't do it. <laughs> Weller, <laughs> GI says. Um, you know, it seems that everyone on the East Coast goes nuts for Weller antique whiskey. Um, I think they're just <laughs> okay, and and in fact, I can get like any bottle you want on our local shelves. It's not in demand. It's reasonably priced. But I get on to uh, r slash whiskey over on Reddit, and uh, 
And every third post about someone finding a whiskey in stock is about a bottle of Weller. And it's like, yeah, that's like 28 bucks, 45 bucks maybe for the, yeah. for the 12. And like you go up from there and it's like, it's all right. Um, yeah, but uh, definitely not my favorite and not, not one that I regularly keep in stock, even though I very much could. So... Um, oh God, uh, sorry. I just got reminded of a, a meme I saw the other day or hard to swallow pills. Oh, uh, okay. so the hard to swallow pills meme, uh, oh, yeah. Blanton's would sit on the shelf at $30 if it didn't have the horse on top. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a bottle of Blanton's next to you? <laughs> Yep. Yep. Again, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's an all right whiskey. Uh, I actually uh, just play for the bottle. I just like the bottle. I don't right. like, like the whiskey. I like I like the right. Bottle. No, the the bottle is badass. I mean, there like, there's I no arguing with how good I that could bottle put is. Seagram Seven in it and probably fool most people. Being like, that's what this is. What are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, and, and all of a sudden they're trying to throw out the, the non, uh, stage name for girls names. Oh. Eleanor. I wouldn't want to see her on stage. Please welcome <laughs> to the stage. Eleanor. Eleanor. Nah, that doesn't work. Um, so, Hey, that totally works. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I will consider it. Yeah. All right. I think that's enough of an intro. Let's go ahead and jump into the news. Maybe we need intros like that of like cutscenes. Yeah. I I need some new transitions in here. Yeah, some transitions. I do. Uh I mean I've got the rant alert. I've got that going, but I I think I need some some clever Elkar's transitions between scenes. I need to figure out how to do that. Um Yeah, I'll uh I'll think about that. Think long and hard about it. You know how hard I work on the graphics for this channel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's usually like, uh, doing this together 20 minutes ago. Let's try it. <laughs> I have a video due in 15 minutes. Means I have 12 minutes to make graphics for it. <laughs> <laughs> I have come up with a pretty good uh, system for creating my thumbnails. Because I think I do come up with some pretty good clickable thumbnails that are mm-hmm. easy to read. You get the point right away. They're not the the clickbait, open mouth YouTuber most of the time. <gasps> yeah, they're they're not that. Um, but they're they're distinguishable enough that you know that's one of Jeff's videos, and it's eye catching enough, but in a different color. Yeah, I think I've I've come up with a pretty good system for that. Uh, my system for creating those thumbnails is I hit render on the video, and then I have until the video is done rendering to Create shoot. It. To shoot and edit uh, the thumbnail, and whatever ah. I'm done by the time by the time I'm ready to upload is the thumbnail that I have. Ah. I, I I don't waste time on it. Um, so usually my thumbnails are like at most 15 minutes, and that's including like cutting myself out and doing any graphics and interlays and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah. Meanwhile, um. I have. Meanwhile, I have offers on Twitter like, hey, I, I make thumbnails for like hundreds of different YouTubers and I'll, I'll get your video more clicks and here's some people that I work with. And it's like, I don't need to pay you $70 for 15 minutes worth of work. Your thumbnails yeah. are beautiful. And I'm sure yeah. you spent three hours coming up with the, you know, the most intricate graphics you possibly could. They're this big. Oh, yeah, I know. That's the problem. They it, need to it, pop. You, and that's it. it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's not everyone sees it as the size of your, you know, what they view the video as is mm-hmm. they see it as a tiny little thumbnail. So, so, some of my some of my Photoshop cuts are dirty, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. So but that's well, then you just blow out the lines and kind of smooths it out. And then you blur the lines. But yep. also you get into the uh, like template. It's like, all right, here's my template. I already have the font I like. I already have the, you know, this yeah, is all done. I, I don't template anything. Um, in, in fact, I, I usually will edit the video and do the final proof and then think of, um, either what I want the title to be and then what I want the thumbnail to draw attention to either the Mm. same title in the thumbnail or, or the words of like HP, we need to talk kind of thing. Like, like the, the, the video this week. Um, but, uh, yeah, in my opinion, thumbnails while important are not three hours worth of work important. 
Fight me. Fight me, Linus, and your full-time graphic designer. <laughs> 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 Who does a lot of other work and... But... <laughs> It's not the most important thing. All right. Uh, now let's get into some news. Speaking of facial stuff. <laughs> anyway, that was a I, horrible transition. That was. I, I had a horrible. joke and I, and I stopped myself from saying it. So. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> so, I already could picture like, that joke just it's, now. It's like, no, no, no. That's how I got the kid on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of faces. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. I went to a family. Friend. John did Jeez. it. John <laughs> did it. Speaking it's this, of, it's this UK logger. <laughs> went straight through you. It's going through me. It's so heavy. <laughs> oh my god. So good. All right. Speaking of faces, which John can never think of again. Uh, Microsoft had to disclose, uh, or no, sorry, it wasn't Microsoft that disclosed. It was researchers at CyberArk. Uh, have unveiled a new uh, method of breaking Windows Hello, which is the facial recognition authentication system for Windows desktops and mobile devices. Um, so kind of like Apple's face recognition for iPhone. And there's a couple of Android variants. I think Samsung has one and whatnot. Um, uh, whereas the iPhone has dedicated hardware for 3D scanning and mapping and can be fooled, but is still fairly difficult to fool. Um, Windows Hello simply is a 2D webcam, often the same low quality webcam that comes on most laptops. Uh, and therein is the interesting crutch of, of the system. Uh, apparently, the way they may have been training Windows Hello is by converting the image into infrared uh, to do the facial recognition, which means if you hold up an already infrared picture of the user's face, it will just log you in. <laughs> One of the most stupid, simple uh, hacks that you could ever imagine yeah uh that's what they found yeah well they they ended up finding out that like you said it's the basically it's just like your webcam mm -hmm. and the, the 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 junky one but like it will also accept what the way they found it was a usb webcam mm -hmm. and if it was set to that um you could then theoretically what they did was took malicious usb drive with just that image stored on it mm -hmm. And then that image would then go into there and be, it would be, yeah, like you said, a flat, um, uh, what is it, heat, heat sink Just or whatever. a flat heat map image, right. Heat map image of the person. So you still technically needed an image of the person and you needed physical access to the device. But that's all you needed. I mean, you can probably make a, a heat map image of the person just from like, say, a Facebook. And then there, I'm sure there's a program that will do it just from pure lighting aspect. And then, um, but yeah, so that was the big hack was the fact that they could just take a USB stick. It wasn't like, oh, I'm holding up a piece of paper and use that. It was, they needed, you know, like a, a pretty decent quality image. Not saying it had to be like super high res, but you know, right. decent PNG or something. Yep. Basically you need a good enough quality image where uh, Windows Hello can generate the face map, which all they're doing is identifying the highlights and the points of your face, much like a motion tracker would, or much like converting to a 3D image would. Um, but yeah, uh, so physical access is needed for the exploit, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, it... it you couldn't exploit the webcam unless you're sitting in front of it anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, and and like John said, they're not necessarily like holding up an image, but essentially they're plugging in a malicious USB device, which presents itself to Windows as a webcam. And then when Windows goes, oh, I need to activate the, the Windows Hello webcam, uh, it'll access whatever image you've loaded onto the USB drive and bobbity boop, you're in. Oh, yeah, and that's the even worse part is that it is just a static image. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I need to move around or anything. Like, a lot, I believe Apple mm -hmm. and Android both, both do that. You know, it's kind of shakiness and, 
and it, it maps a little bit more 3D uh, aspect of your face mm -hmm. to where this is literally, oh, I'm, I'm probably looking for five points, eyes, nose, mouth, you know, right. along that line. Yeah, I think it does so, more than than that, but yeah, it, but it's yeah, a much I, I, simpler just, map yeah, than just, yeah. That's that's uh, that was yeah. my point. You know, what's nice about these bottles is there's like a full pint and a half in here, so 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 now I get to start over. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, that's the I, I'm all done, but um, <laughs> I will say okay, it smells worse than it tastes. Um, it's not a great taste. It's not. <laughs> crisp and clean like mm -hmm. uh andy always talks about these wonderful uk loggers mm -hmm. i will take an ipa <laughs> I, yeah I, I have had some i have had some loggers straight from the uk in fact i might have one in my fridge i might want to check that um but i've had loggers from the uk and what they consider crisp and clean Man, must be the same thing that Louisiana considers crisp and clean because in Oregon, <laughs> we actually can get dry when we come out of the shower. Yeah. And so crisp and clean are actually words that we use to describe a, a current state of something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is not. I mean, it has malt, but it's just maybe it's the bad import. It's a green bottle, so it's letting light through. So it automatically yeah. already gets that like slight skunk yeah yeah so uh no i mean may maybe it's a uk beer trying to be an asian beer because it's the essence of nepal so <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i maybe they're like oh this tastes horrible this tastes like oh asani yeah it tastes like that oh it's the essence of nepal <laughs> There you go. That's there our ticket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to get that Asian market now. All right. Ugh. Those UK loggers must smell like their football team. <laughs> now, those Italian <laughs> loggers. <Ooh. laughs> those things are hairy, guys. <laughs> Yeasty, too. Whew. So, the good news about the uh, the webcam Windows Hello exploit is there is already a uh, critical vulnerability uh, number assigned to it. Uh, so it should be part of the uh, upcoming Patch Tuesday, uh, I believe in the next week or two, is this is being addressed. Uh, but uh, Microsoft hasn't said how they are actually fixing it. Are they uh, detecting the presence of spoofed webcams? Because that might be difficult to do or are they simply fixing the the infrared recognition issue uh which certainly could be what they're doing and and forcing a either a live image or a multi-frame image or something like that so in the end this will make windows hello more secure but nothing is more secure than a better password hi you want to come on come on <laughs> yeah come on my my son wants to come on <laughs> come here buddy yeah, what, what son? <laughs> I have no father. <laughs> there we go. Let's see. Where are we? There we go. Can hey, buddy. Say, can you say hi? Hi. Hi. Very good. <laughs> so, see, there you are, right there. <laughs> yeah. So, it's his bedtime, right? Yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> And then you got to try your special beer, the 0.0, .0 beer. Ooh. He likes those. So, pretty cool? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can I have a kiss? All right. Love you. Love you. Oh, where I go? So, what's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to Jeff right now. Mmm, oh. yeah. Can I sit on your lap? Okay, you can sit on my lap for a little bit. Okay, but you got to be quiet, okay? All right. <laughs> GI so, says, yeah. see a wholesome family channel. That's right. As long as we don't go back to that joke about faces. <laughs> <laughs> One and done. That's my motto. <laughs> there you go. Can you hear? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I was actually just telling this story to uh, a friend of mine that little bit uh usually when kids like smell beer or alcohol or anything like that they usually uh, they, they do that kind oh, of yeah. reaction um little bit 
Not so much. Um, so I was standing in the kitchen one day and I had uh, made myself an old fashioned for dinner. And I made it with my Delta Rye, which is the 111 proof uh, rye. Uh, fantastic stuff, but quite strong. Uh, anyway, uh, the kids always ask, can they smell my drink? Because that's, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll let them smell it. And uh, and and I always laugh at it. So I, I lowered the glass down a little bit and she goes, ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, he, he loves like checking out all of my drinks and everything. You know, mm -hmm. what, what is the, what is the, what does daddy drink? Alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what do I drink a little bit of? Drink a little what down? Whiskey. Whiskey down. That's it. Can you sing it? Drink a little whiskey down. <laughs> there we go. Good job. <laughs> yeah. So every time I ever have anything like brown liquor, it's like, is that your whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's what Miss asks me is uh, if it's anything it's like she knows what a beer can looks like, but yeah. any drink that she doesn't recognize, is that whiskey? Yeah. So no, he loves. Yes. Yeah, so I have loves... a pint of whiskey in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, ever since ever since I did that non-alcoholic month and I had those 0, 0.0 stuff, he's like, I can have these? Yeah. What? You know, I do have some hopped waters out in the fridge. I wonder if Bit yeah. would like those. So and then and then and then what we do is just refill it with sparkling water. <laughs> All right, buddy. Love you. Oh, there we go. All right, we're back. So he he goes on when my wife does her lives. Uh, so he gets to be on those. So I guess he wanted to be on mine. Nice. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Moving I, right along. Basically, what it is is I needed to bump my numbers up to beat Rhett. So I was like, That's I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to throw my kid in there and come two weeks from now. Rest goes, well, I'm going to have my kid on. You're right. <laughs> well, in about four months, I'm going to have all three of my kids on. So there you go. I'll just do another solo show. And you're yeah. you're going to do how to install a baby, smart baby monitor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. All right, moving right along. Moving right along. Uh, the big announcement for the week is going to come right after today's video sponsor. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yep. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by, not them, Linode. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I still had them queued up. Uh, if you've ever needed to host your own servers, whether it be for home or business, but don't have the resources or time to invest into hardware, power, cooling, or even space, why not let Linode host them for you? If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. That includes a lot of the software from the tutorials you've seen on my channel, like how to run your own ad-blocking recursive DNS server, VPN gateway, your own cloud-based Plex server, and more. Linode makes it simple to deploy and manage your own cloud services, with solutions ranging from a single shared CPU to massive multi-core virtual machines. They even offer dedicated RTX 6000 GPUs for graphic rendering or machine learning. With shared CPU plans starting at as little as $5 per month and scaling up to as high as you need to go, you'll be able to find a hosting plan that fits your needs. And even if you do host your own servers, you can use Linode to keep it backup off-site. Because remember, RAID is not a backup. Visit Linode.com slash Craft Computing and get a $100 60-day credit just for signing up for a new account. That's Linode.com slash Craft Computing, and thanks again to Linode for sponsoring today's episode. All right. Well, that's... So, you pre-ordered... What was that? Uh, I did. The, the GPD? The, the GPD win. Yeah, yep. you ordered that. You, did yes. you get it in? You got it in. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, and so you yeah, you did a video on it, right? I did. Yeah. Uh, no one watched it, and that really ticked me off because I put so much work I, into I that particular video. I watched it, and I shared it to, to people that were interested in, in buying that, and they're like, yeah. I'm, I'm buying one now. So. Yeah, it's it's the curse of YouTube where once you find a niche and you, you go towards that niche even a little bit, any video outside of that niche, they don't promote they they yeah. don't share they un, unless you're linus and even linus has ebbs and flows depending on what type of video he does um same with with bitwit same with kyle same with jay um you have to be in your wheelhouse and uh like if gamers nexus ever liked something on a video god that video would just plummet <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Sorry, Steve. I know, in the middle of it, it would be hilarious <laughs> if he's just there and, like, taking it apart. He's like, you know what? I just like this. This is actually really fun. It's just it's a good product. Fun. It's just a good, like... I'm going to run this in my own computer. Yeah, if he <laughs> like, sat there and said that, he just with his, with his sheet of listen spec stuff, you know what? And just yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> tosses it aside. Yeah. But yes, I own the GPD Win 1, the GPD Win 2, the GPD Win 3. I love the handheld market. I, uh, I've i always been enthusiastic for that style and that form factor. Yeah. Um, you know, it reminds me of the old Sony Vio convertibles and things like that. Like, oh, yeah. Well, um, I mean, you can go back to the old Sega, Sega, uh, the um, Dream Game Gear. Game Gear. Yeah. I mean, really, that that's probably that first style. Yeah. Uh, that I can think of. Yeah. And if you want to go thickness, you can go the Sega Nomad. Yeah. So, right. really, right there. Um, and then two weeks ago, the Nintendo did their launch of the brilliantly named OLED. Or the Nintendo Switch OLED. Um, as if you've seen two weeks ago, the last time I was on, no one was happy. No one was surprised. In fact, everyone was hugely, hugely disappointed. Yes. It kind of came off kind of weird that what, within seven days? <laughs> uh, like three days. Yeah. Ish. Ish. I don't I don't even think it was a full three. I think it was like, you know, 60 hours and... <laughs> <laughs> Here uh, we are. Steam, Steam was like, you know what? We're we're gonna lay a steaming pile of deck on Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> How long you been saving that one? <laughs> I just came up with it. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna drop an upper decker. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the phrase I wanted to use. Thank you. A steaming deck was pretty good though. <laughs> um, so uh, this last Thursday, Valve introduced the Steam Deck, uh, the handheld to pretty much end the handheld market. So this is going to simultaneously introduce everyone to the handheld PC market and destroy the competition all in one fell swoop. Um, Because if you look at the consoles that are currently out there that are kind of like this, uh, you have the big name in in the market, and that's the uh, the GPD Win 3. Um, It's $1,100. And it's it's a new computer. (laughs) And it's it's. It's good hardware. It's it's Intel Tiger Lake with Intel X, XE graphics with 92 compute units. It's got 16 gigs of LPDDR4. Uh, it's got a one terabyte NVMe drive in it. Uh, you know, still a, a 720p, five and a half inch display, which works just fine. It's touchscreen. Uh, and the controls are adequate. Not the most comfortable thing in the world, especially if you're gaming past like 90 minutes at a time, but it's adequate. Well, you've also got the AM Neo, which is the AMD Ryzen uh, version yeah. of the of that, which uh, I think is a six inch screen and doesn't have a slide out keyboard, but does have uh, all the same control inputs and has a couple of customizable buttons on it as well. Um, that one's like eight fifty. Yeah, I think so it was like eight hundred. A little bit lower, but still excessive. It th- this is remember this is like third device like i already have a desktop and i already have a laptop and and i want probably and i want something to take on the plane with me that i can game for two hours on like that's what this market is and that's what it's always been uh well enter the steam deck at 399 dollars with a full four core eight thread ryzen uh two cpu uh uh, as well as an RDNA 2 based graphics card with eight compute units. Uh, so this is an APU style chip, but the latest generation of AMD APUs. Uh, it also comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 5,300 megahertz, or sorry, Ian, uh, 5,300 instructions per second. Uh, uh, so MTS, mega transfers per second. Uh, and, uh, yeah, four hundred bucks. Now for four hundred dollars, it's definitely a little bit more stripped down. It's only got sixty-four gigabytes of eMMC memory, probably about ten of which is going to be operating system and 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 base swap files and that kind of thing. 
Um, but you can get it with 256 and 512 gigs of storage via an NVMe drive. Uh, and it's kind of user replaceable, although that still, even with Gabe's email response confirmation, still kind of remains to be seen how viable that is in the 2230 form factor. Um, it's an M.2, but it's a it's a short little guy. Yeah, and so this is going to be running on their proprietary OS, which is Linux based. But they mm -hmm. did say that you could technically like wipe it and install Windows if you wanted to. Well, they didn't, but um, someone was saying that they could, and it would still technically run it. So you could do that yeah. um, with the specs. And now, sixty four gigs of uh, EMMC in turn, uh, uh, storage isn't a whole lot. Now, it does come with a SD expandable high speed reader. Take that with, you know, what you will. That's not going to be, you know, fast, I, I have, I don't have my AAA games running on, on SD cards, um, but I do have all of my emulators running on there. Yeah. I do have uh, some simpler games, some, some older, smaller games. Like um, on my GPD Win 1, I played Far Cry 2 completely off the SD card because. Oh the GPD Win 1 only has 64 gigs of eMMC. It's like the same exact thing. Um, and I use the micro SD card slot on there to install all of my games. And so I played through the entirety of Far Cry 2 and it was great. Yeah. So uh, they were stating that the battery theoretically should last between two and five hours. We'll see mm -hmm. about how that works, but you know, uh, but essentially, yeah, this is the, what what isn't the Switch OLED, was that, 250 or or, or 350 350 like, i think yeah i think it was 350 so for 50 dollars more you can essentially get your steam account which is pretty much almost every game now yeah uh thanks to ea <laughs> yeah. going away um pretty much on there and it'll probably run pretty decently it's got a 60 hertz screen so that's even already better but it's not oled so uh, well, the Nintendo has a 60 hertz screen as well. It's too bad the Nintendo can't power games at 60 frames per second. Well, yeah, but yeah, 29, so there's that. isn't it? <laughs> Ish. <laughs> like 22 Ish. on Breath of yeah, the Wild. Yeah, I know. It's not even 30. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, some games run at 60, but mo the majority of games run at 30. Um, so this is an interesting spec that I actually didn't realize until, uh, who was that uh, pointed it out? Uh, Lionel pointed it out in the chat. Uh, the 16 gigs of LPDDR5 is also quad channel, 32 bit memory. Mm. Holy crap. Um, so for those who don't know, usually Zen chips are dual channel unless they are in a desktop and Threadripper style format. Uh, so all of their desktop chips and all of their mobile chips are always dual channel. This has a quad channel memory controller with DDR5 running at 5,500. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that, uh, that RDNA uh, uh, eight core APU then, is starting yeah. to look a little bit more realistic as far as being able to drive games at 1080p, 30 to 60 FPS, depending on what the game is. Um, now, John kind of beat me to the punch, but oh, sorry. I want to... That's okay. That's okay. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about SteamOS because I think SteamOS, outside of the just, frankly, astonishing price point that the, that the Steam Deck is at, I think SteamOS is getting lost in the shuffle. Now, obviously, I have a bit of a soft spot for SteamOS. I've done two quite successful videos on SteamOS. Uh, one in 2018 and the other in 2019. I skipped 2020 because, well, it hasn't been updated at all. Um, and so here I thought that SteamOS was just a, you know, like I said, kind of dead in the water, even though they got Proton support, but it looks like they're gearing towards like, just install Pop OS or Ubuntu 2004 or something like that, and just run Steam on it. And you can use Proton and Wine and DXVK and all those other fun things. And it, it'll it just work. Um, well, intro, enter SteamOS 3.0, which is no longer very, very old Debian kernel based. Rather, it is Arch Linux based. So they've gone completely the, the other direction as far as um, not necessarily stability, but like cutting edge for what the software and what the kernel can possibly do. Uh, 
And it's not just Steam running inside of Arch. This is full Arch with full desktop. What's crazy about this, and, and I'll, I'll go two directions with this, is just like Steam getting Proton up and running and the video that I did two years ago with an 85% success rate of running games at roughly Windows equivalent frame rates um, was insane. And that certainly upped the adoption of some Linux gamers uh, in installing Steam and forgoing Windows altogether. Now, one of the biggest hurdles to that is still been multiplayer gaming. So all the anti-cheat software, Valve anti-cheat, um, and, and all the various DRMs and things like that. Those still are not... Uh, playable on Linux. Valve has said that not only is every game playable in your library, every game, they said every game is playable on Arch Linux, uh, but they are working with virtually every single anti-cheat and DRM provider to get their software running natively on Linux. Um, now, the thing that I'm surprised by is that the Linux community is saying, no, we don't want that. We don't want a <laughs> bunch of, it's like, don't you like hate Microsoft and, and want people to, no. <laughs> Doing my best John Mulaney impression here. <laughs> no. Um, it's, uh, it's really interesting to see the Linux community overreact to like, great, now there's gonna be a company developing stuff for us. Yeah, isn't that kind of what you wanted? You wanted like massive... No, we wanted it all open source and free. Yeah. Oh, well, community B. Right. Well, we can't get there unless there are big names involved. Until Adobe decides to release Creative Cloud for Linux, you're not going to get a fully featured non-linear editor. I'm sorry, OpenShot. It's pretty good. Uh, DaVinci's still a paid program. And other than that, that's your ballgame. So... You either let other people into your ecosystem and kind of accept it, which with other people coming into your ecosystem is also going to come, I don't know, better driver support, better software support. Maybe even you'll be able to control your RGB lighting on your motherboard from your Linux client. Like, wouldn't that be <laughs> wonderful? Um, and, uh, but no, the, the, the backlash from the Arch Linux community has been hilarious. Great. Now we're going to get a bunch of noobs asking questions in here and I have and I'm going to have to act all superior all day long. <laughs> what you haven't been using Linux for the past 15 years? Where have you been? Mhm. Mm you know, yeah, that. Ugh. God, you don't even pseudo. Yeah. <laughs> do do you even pseudo? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um it's just been really really funny um i think just like proton was a major step this is a major step for linux in general um because and i said this before i feel like this there's something in the back of my brain that's saying valve is working on more than just a gaming compatibility layer because they understand that gaming is, while it may be a large part of some some computer use, it's not the only part of computer use. Um, and I think that's kind of where they went wrong with Steam Machines, was a Steam Machine was just yeah, a console anymore. competitor. Yeah, uh, it, wa <laughs> it wasn't a do-everything computer. It had, it had the built-in Steam web browser, which was garbage. And other than that, it booted into big picture mode. And so all you could do was play games. And if I'm going to buy a computer... I'm probably going to run Windows, mm. just the way it is. And I know the Linux people are pissed off at me now. Why would you run Windows? Well, you didn't want, you didn't want me running Arch, so there you go. Um, but just like, or rather, sorry, backing up, backing up to my Steam 2.0 video, the the one I did in 2019, I stated at the time that it would be amazing to see some kind of loader that would launch 
Proton, Wine, DXVK, whatever the application would be, and be essentially a compatibility layer that you could install a Windows program on Linux and Valve would handle the translation. Yeah. Because that's essentially what they're saying they can do right now is with all of their Windows games. Like, they're saying they've solved all of the API compatibility issues and that running on Arch Linux is the same as running on Windows. And I kind of want to see them put their money where their mouth is. And I would love to see a universal Windows application installer on SteamOS. Yeah, no, this this will be interesting. I think a lot of those questions are going to be announced or are answered once this gets in people's hands. Yeah. An interesting thing of the pre-orders, uh, they are like dramatically been pre-ordered. Oh God! Um, and I think they were not even going to be released till uh, I think for the three ninety nine. It was like spring of next year. And then yeah. uh, the mid-tier one is like four or five months later. They said second quarter of 2020. Uh, they're up to third quarter now and fourth yeah. quarter. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just getting pushed back because it, it, it's almost like this is just like uh, the graphics cards of, of last year. Uh, you know, the, the, the 300 series or 3000 series. Yep. Uh, you know, everyone wanted to buy them and we're super, super excited. I just hope this isn't going to be that big letdown um the thing is have you seen the numbers that they sold because yeah. Oh, steam yeah. yeah well steam accidentally leaked those yeah. via via the steam database uh and so for a while the pre-order numbers were publicly accessible for about the first 90 minutes yeah uh if you couldn't get one in the first 90 minutes there's a reason why it's that because they received a hundred thousand pre-orders in the first 90 minutes Oh, yeah. No, I mean, this is literally like new console pre-order. Um, you know, it's going to be competing with the Nintendo, the, you know, mm -hmm. PS4 by whatever number we're on, Xbox One, or I don't I don't yep. keep track of those, but, you know, whatever, those. It really is. And I love, I love the handheld, like you were saying, the, the handheld aspect of this. The one thing is I wouldn't mind a battery expansion. Um, two, two to five hours. That's not a whole lot. And I have to buy a battery, even with my Switch. I even bought, like, you know, a big battery pack to, like, keep with me. Yeah. To, to keep it going. Um, it, it's not a whole lot. And that's the one bad part about that form factor of it being a little bit thin. That battery power is it, not a lot. Now, they did a really good job of utilizing the graphics card, the processor, and the RAM being a bit lower power. Mm -hmm. But still... I question that and I, I really do hard. I'm betting it's going to be a hard two hours. Yeah. If you're, if you're a good serious game, if you're trying, you know, even... actually, uh, I have the GPD win three, as, as we kind of started this conversation yeah. with, um, I can realistically get, uh, depending on the game that I'm playing, some yeah. games are two hours. Some games are just hard luck, but that's kind of the low end. Um, it's actually pretty feasible and realistic that I get three on average, upwards of four and a half to five if I'm playing some simpler games. Um, now, as I stated in the review, which no one watched, uh, I do I do things a little bit different on the mobile side of things. I'm not expecting PC game performance. I'm not expecting ultra settings, 60 frames per second, 1080p. Yeah. You know, I'm not PC master racing it in a five and a half inch handheld. The thing's the size of my cell phone. I'm expecting it to be playable. And yeah. what I mean by that is 60 FPS is fantastic, but it's a 60 Hertz screen. I don't need to go beyond that. I also don't need to crank the detail as max as it'll go because it's the size of my cell phone. <laughs> Yeah, and so I mean, yeah, you can crank it down to the ultra low, and you're like, this is still really good. Still looks fantastic. Looks better than the Switch, and runs at 60 frames per second. Like, yeah. what else do you want? And so most of the games I will run right around medium settings, um, because if you go too low, it it still looks fuzzy. Um, but you run at 720p, you run at at medium settings. 
it's still a pretty good mobile experience. And you get, and if you cap your frame rate at 60 FPS, that's the other thing that I do because any frames that are rendered outside of 60 FPS are literally wasted processing cycles. So there's no point to go faster than that because your screen can't display it. So I cap my, my frame rate at 60 FPS on every game that I play on there. And I get three and a half, four hours pretty regularly. I would be, I'm curious then. Now, I don't remember your two, two years ago, Steam OS. Do they allow you to adjust those settings of like capping uh, graphic settings and everything? Or is that internally for game? Um, you can, the easiest way to do that in game is to turn on vSync. Um, okay. And so every game has vSync support, which will cap it at the re at the refresh rate of your monitor, your monitor which is usually yeah. 60 frames per second. Um, I've actually on the Windows side downloaded Riva Tuner, uh, and uh, that has a frame rate cap in it that hooks into the driver and says you can't run faster than this. Um, and so it'll it's great being able to run the Intel Xe graphics at like 40 percent because that's all this game needs to run at 720p medium settings. Like, yeah. why why waste more power than that? There's no point. There's absolutely no point when you're gaming on the go. So it, it yeah. takes a little bit more thought process and it takes understanding the compromises of a mobile system. Um, that and that's, what, that's what I'm wondering is, is that I wonder how user-friendly Steam will be make this mm -hmm. to or versus how much they're just going to, yeah, this is what we're going to do and we're going to default the settings always. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, that's, something I'm going to be more a little bit curious of when people start getting their hands on it and tech reviewers start reviewing it. Um, you know, yeah, I, I'm sure it's going to be comfortable. They got the trackpads too, that are basically essentially just like if you've ever had the steam controller. Um, I have yeah. one, if you ever got used to those, they're okay. I mean, it was a cheap controller. And I never was... quite was able to get used to it, but I can definitely see the appeal in some games. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Some games that worked and some games I didn't like it either. Yeah. Um, I, I just liked the fact that it was a controller and okay, I can kind of do a, a mouse movement really quick. Right. And you know, if I needed a scroller. So it was and I didn't want to get up. Yep. Um, so they're doing that and I, I guess they improved it, whatever. Um, so this'll it's got some nifty little things on it. It's got the nice little uh, addressable extra buttons mm -hmm. on the back, the four extra triggers for those people. So it's gyroed. It's a nice, very cool little handheld device i'm excited for but i don't think i'm gonna be getting one until probably christmas of 2022 <laughs> well i i got my reservation in in the first 18 minutes yeah. so uh i should have a first release of the 256 nvme oh okay so, so you got you got mid-tier i got mid-tier um emmc now, here's the deal. If you only plan on streaming your games, this is still going to be a fantastic system. So if you've got good Wi-Fi wherever you're going, um, the 256 uh, EMMC or the, the 64 gig EMMC makes a lot of sense because you don't need a lot of local storage. If you want to throw emulators or, or some smaller end games on there, you can throw them on a micro SD card and they'll still work just fine. Um, and you can stream your games over Wi-Fi using Parsec or StreamPlay or anything like that. Um, I got the 256 because I like the idea of having some games that I can carry with me. Uh, yeah. so right now I'm, I'm gaming on, or I'm, uh, rolling through the Mass Effect Legendary uh, Edition. And it really sucks because right now I have a 5950X and a 3090, but my primary gaming PC is my GPD Win 3. <laughs> and I work from home. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's that's the thing is like you're like upstairs and you got to watch the kids and do stuff. With right. Them. You're like, right. you know, hang on. I got 30 minutes. I'm going to go on the couch and I can still watch the kids in my peripheral. Mm -hmm. But I got this. And, and mm -hmm. that's but again, that's the kind of another benefit of these type of devices. Again, why yeah. I really did like the switch when it first came out. It is. Uh, portable versus where the Wii U was kind of like, oh, you can take it away from your car. Like, no, you you have 20 feet. That's yeah. not, that's nothing. Yeah. This, the switch was, I could take it anywhere. And that was the fantastic part. And I think these uh, other mobile gaming devices, the GDP win, the steam, mm -hmm. um, they're doing that. It's, it's becoming small enough to be powerful enough. So I, I really do like that aspect. And I'm curious yes. to see what, 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 what's everything's going to be happening. You did get three super chats. 
Yes, actually four. Uh, so Michael sends over one, five dollars. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, love the idea of AMD handheld. Just hate they can't get enough fab space to make enough. Yeah, story of the world right now. Um, the problem is right now that you're not just competing with like consoles. You're also competing for fab space with like automotive OEMs and <laughs> yeah, refrigerator makers and and like fab space is tight across every industry because everyone uses the same fab space so it's tough uh roland sends over five dollars thank you very much roland uh get those likes up dudes this is what you need uh yeah 169 viewers 53 likes come on you guys can do better than that yeah cosworth five dollars thank you very much sir uh, Jeff, you've been watching Linux Unplugged, haven't you? Actually, no, I haven't. And I saw when that super chat rolled in and that was the uh, universal installer for Windows apps on a Linux system. Um, no, actually, I said that two years ago that that's the next killer feature that I wanted to see out of SteamOS was a universal installer. Um, because if you can get that and if you can make it work at 90% speed, but you're also taking away the overhead of Windows running to gain 10% back. It's a pretty good trade. So, yeah, uh, that's that's my my theory for the next thing that will uh, be happening. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Andrew says, uh, the Fox says uh, that he's estimating 1.8 times performance of the A and Neo. Um I'm not sure I 100% agree, but I also can't discredit that theory either. Um, let me remind myself of the uh, Neo specs. 16 gigs, DDR4, 4266. Uh, sorry. 4500U. Okay. So... I mean, obviously, the the Steam Deck is going to have more than double the memory bandwidth, but you're still only looking RDNA 8, uh, eight compute unit versus RDNA 2 8 compute unit. Yeah, memory bandwidth's important, but is it 1.8x important? I don't know. Um... And 4500U is still Zen 2. I mean, that's what we're going to get on the Steam Deck is something very similar. Now, it's custom silicon, which is why we have the quad-channel memory controller. Um, but uh, I can say it's it's definitely going to be better, but how much better? I don't know. And remember, this is still limited at 15 watts, which is where I run the GPD Win 3. Um, I, I don't think... Again, in a mobile handheld, I don't need to hold 28 watts of power in my hand and melt my fingers off so I can run at ultra settings. You're going to feel very warm. <laughs> yeah, I actually I also run at uh, minimum fan speeds as well because I don't want to hear the dang thing either. And so, oh no, he's thermal throttling and he's only drawing 15 watts. Yeah, but you know what? I'm playing for four hours and that's what this is about. Oh no, I have 0.1% lows down at 28. You know what? I didn't notice because it's a screen the size of my cell phone. <laughs> like, there's some give and take because of mobility. This is yeah. not PCMR. It's two different sets of reviews. Like, you could even tell it was, you know, that big of a jump in graphics or frame rate mm -hmm. um, on that small of a screen anyways. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yes, I did uh, day one purchase and hopefully wave one purchase a uh, Steam Deck. So I'm hoping right around the time my new child is born, I will have a Steam Deck to <laughs> keep me company so <laughs> through those long do, nights. You need to go probably like day you get it, go on like Etsy or eBay, see if you can find a lower deck <laughs> case to go over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's your Steam Deck lower deck. Yes. Yeah, enough of those upper deckers. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, I hope no one can hear my 3D printer humming away in the background because it's, uh, it's a humming and that's why it's a little warm in here. That's why I'm... <laughs> um, I have a fan over on my other desk underneath it 
uh, and I didn't move the fan over here, and so I'm a little warm sitting here right now. Oh, now you know how I feel like. Uh, do I have a temperature gauge in here? I don't think I do. Uh, it's still probably like 74, oh, 76. Okay. Oh, well, it's a little warm. I'm probably sitting in here like 80 right. plus, no, I, almost 90. I, I, I've said before, I have Kevin James disease, which is, uh, what were you, jumping rope in the attic? No, I peeled an orange. Like, <laughs> I, I'm not a big guy, but I sweat like nothing else under the weirdest circumstances. <laughs> Like I'll walk down the stairs and 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 I'll I'll walk in here and I'm just like dripping sweat. Well, it's see, like what the heck? You and your wife are sharing that pregnancy glow. Mm-hmm. Uh, not for the last twenty years we haven't been. <laughs> uh, Japan has shattered internet speed records with a recorded three hundred nineteen terabit terabit. Per second. This could change everything. Or, you know, say the same, since Comcast will only let you use 500 megs. So. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Well, the cool thing about this <laughs> is they're not using anything special. Mm -hmm. They're actually using just the standard fiber optic cable that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. And so just, hey, we just kind of tweaked what we already have. So basically, it's theoretically possible for everyone to do this yeah or at least increase the, their speed and but yeah just like you said now comcast will just still take, by the right. way this was also done on a trans-pacific cable this was a 3,000 mile run or 3,000 kilometer 1864 mile run um so uh yeah this wasn't like in the same server stack this was lr this was long range fiber uh 319 terabit um the previous speed record was 178 terabit so they practically doubled it and seven times the speed of 44.2 terabit which was set i believe in 2017 i want to say uh but uh yes it's quite fast and using current fiber technology uh just new optics and new new encoding and decoding tech uh, uh algorithms on each end so pretty good stuff uh, see i'm about done with this beer where are you at with your first uh, or are you on your second I, i'm done i'm sorry my my son wants to watch apparently a uh link uh youtube video hmm uh, he wants the, the some fine programming on craft computing, as it were. Hey, Wait, buddy, which one did you want? <laughs> Just the Cyclops. Okay. There you go. Let him watch the Cyclops. God. Oh, he loves. Um, he's really into Breath of the Wild. Uh, yep. And um, oh, is he he watching some Hynix fights? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're Cyclops, and uh, he has names for all of the bad guys, as, as he calls them. And so instead of so our, our usual routine was like, okay, we're we're putting you down, and then uh, we play like uh, a game of one round of like mobile Mario Kart. Yeah, because yeah. it lets you like you you never crash, you never lose. Yeah, and so yeah. he loves just doing whatever. But now he started playing Breath of the Wild, and actually. He's pretty good at it surprisingly <laughs> um like he's he's killing the the robot the the guardians and everything and i was like how'd you how'd you do that nice. perfect <laughs> um, rebound <laughs> yeah i was just like wait how'd you do that i didn't know you could do that yeah and uh he's like check out this sword i got I like where'd you find that at that's cool um uh but so now but he's never fought like anytime there's a uh, a villain or something he's always like I don't really want to fight them because I like them. And, and, and once, once I beat Ganon, they'll become my friend. <laughs> and, and so they'll like me. So I don't want to kill them. 
I hope like, he no, stays no. that naive forever. I know. I was like, no, no, buddy, that's not how it works. And then, and then he'll go to the no. Ganon and... is literally like evil incarnate. I like, know. <laughs> he's like, no, no, Ganon. I don't think he wants to be he'll, friends. He'll be well. No, it's all the other people. After you kill mm. Ganon, mm -hmm. they'll all be. But it's like, well, buddy, you have mm. to kill these guys to get to Ganon. <laughs> yep. He's like, no, I, I. They're gonna be my friends. And it's like, <laughs> no, that's not how it works. And so he just then watches YouTube videos of other people beating the villain. Oh, there you go. And, yeah. And so that's now his favorite. And then we found one where, because now, now it's been, you know, Breath of the Wild's been out for so long. People are doing some pretty crazy tricks to where they're like riding on top of Guardians, fighting uh, Cyclopses or other, I think the, the Leos or whatever, but they're still on top of a Guardian or they're making Guardians float with the magnet. And stuff. So, so he's he's wanting to watch those quick videos, and so instead of playing Mario Kart really quick, he wants to watch five minutes of that. So, and then my wife didn't know what he was talking about. The thing with the Cyclops. Yeah, and... she's like something Zelda Cyclops. Can you find the video? And so, um, yeah, we, we even go into like <laughs> Breath of the Wild wiki, and he wants to see all the pictures, like. Now tell me, what does this one do? Well, that's a bat. That's a bat that with electricity. Well, how does it get you? Well, it comes and bites you on the neck. And <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's not very nice. Like, no, it's not. Well, he'll be our friend, right? And it makes no. you drop the royal halberd that you've been like coveting <laughs> for the last three oh, weeks. He and... will not. He will not drop swords that are about to break. <laughs> he's like, he's like, no, no, no. That's I like this favorite. one. Yeah, no, that's my yeah. favorite. I was like, we yeah. can get it back. Well, where can we get it? But I like it now that it's flashing red. <laughs> He's like, now it's even more special. Yeah. I was like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> it's going to break. <laughs> the Master Sword is the only one that doesn't break. And then, oh, it kind of irritates me, too, that, like, he'll take the Master Sword and try to break the rocks with it. I'm like, no, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah. oh, and then he's like why did why is it breaking so fast like well you're hitting black rock yeah it's like the hardest substance they have <laughs> uh. so yeah um you're mining with a royal broadsword like stop <laughs> exactly, that's exactly what it is <laughs> uh. so yeah Hey dad, I, I hey dad, I found an amber deposit. Clang, clang, clang. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's yeah. great. Yeah. It's All very, right. It's very humorous. All right, you got your uh, are you done with yours? I am. I'm done with mine. Um uh, yeah, what are you going for? I'm going you, for you were surpri you surprised me. I'm going oh. for clever girl. Clever girl. Uh That's so a... this is Velocihopter. That's not that's not the high one, right? Uh no, this is uh that's the Megalodon. Yeah, maybe. So this is of the same series, but this is the Velocihopter. This is the 6.6% .6 version of Megalodon. Yeah. Uh from oh. Nkasi Brewing down in Eugene, Oregon. All right. Aha. Whoa. Taking my mic with me. <laughs> It's always fun hearing John try to get into his fridge. Oh, that's not it. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh. All right. Might as well introduce the next story. Or is John going to be back? There he is. All right. We'll wait for John. All right. So what I you got? Go I had to go. I have to go back to uh, an IPA. Uh huh. Uh, it is. Um, uh, well, it's not Friday, but it's. Thank God, it's Friday. Private error. Um, let's see if I can get the get the focus. There it goes. It's a little nice. But it's all all the error error codes from Windows. Uh, double dry hop triple IPA. So it's a five-way collaboration. A oh, print error, sorry, printer error. That, that's what I really wanted. It's like, oh, perfect. <laughs> printer error. 
So now that I had that wonderful, wonderful UK lager, mm-hmm. I'm going to have that something crisp, that's clean, refreshing, crisp, clean, you know, not bitter at all. Oh. For the beer that won't fill you up or never lets you down. Oh, that's make it I a like. UK lager. Uh, I don't know what Andy talks about, man. This that smells delicious. Right. Like mm. this is the like medium version of of Megalodon. This is six and a half percent, whereas Megalodon is ten percent. It's the same IPA base though. So this is nine nine. Nine okay, yeah. Nine nine. And this is crisp, refreshing, clean, citrusy. This is malty, fruity. Um, I get a a lot of like I want to say a, a apricot and um Ooh. kumquat actually on the nose Very yeah th this has this has a citrus start and and kind of a malty mid flavor mm -hmm. um and uh but it's like this rich fruit all the way through yeah um, no this is yeah this is think like think like a blood orange like oh yeah um like like a little bitey citrusy up front and then just rich rich fruit um like blood orange and guava is kind of what oh, this yeah. is. Yeah. Ugh. People are asking, what glass is this? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this one is called. <laughs> um, oh, so I was trying to find, because you know, we love, you and I love glassware, right? Glassware, yes. And it's I a was, weakness. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to find so hard. Uh, it popped up on my feed. I was like, I have no, no why. I've never looked for that. But the 10 forward glassware, uh, the one that Scotty uses, the one that's in the, yep. the Sunrise, the Sumerian Sunrise, yep. uh, that stick with a ball. And then it kind of just hairily flares out. And someone had it, uh, a set of them on eBay. I, I found it last year. Three of them, they sold it for like 20 bucks. I was like, yeah. it was a prop. It, it was like the actual ones used. And I was like, oh, I would have loved to have gotten it. Yeah, yeah. I should have. So I was like, if I could find those and one day just show up on Talking Heads and be like, Jeff, you know what this glass is? Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Now I'm eBaying on camera. Like, yeah. this is dangerous. It's dangerous this late at night anyway. Oh, what are you buying? Cards or glassware? Glassware. <laughs> Glassware is almost as expensive as graphics cards. <laughs> yeah. Some of them. It can be. It can really be. can oh, be. I, I've uh, I've looked at some of those. There's some glow ultra, like the radioactive stuff ones. Mm -hmm. They're hand blown. They're like a hundred and twenty bucks a glass. You know, because yeah. they're made by hand in one person, so every glass is technically unique. Yeah. Unique doesn't mean better. No, exactly. It's... But it's unique and it gives you those really cool pictures. There is a... <sighs> Holy what crap, Skull. Well done. <laughs> oh, now I need to know. It, it's that one. Yes. <laughs> I buy a lot of glassware at Ikea. Um, and I guess this one... No, this one's not actually marked Ikea on the bottom. It doesn't have the engraving. But yeah. No, th this one is an Ikea glass, and it's the uh, Amtonskin, um, um, something like that. Where is, oh, did, did he show the glassware? No, he linked it. Oh, oh, okay. He has a link for where to buy it. Oh, your glassware, okay. I, I need an Ikea so he, affiliate link is what I need. He recognized it right away. Yeah, $5 for a four pack, yeah. No, I, I bought these because they're unique looking, and uh, and I needed a new twelve ounce glass for for doing smaller cans when I'm on camera, um, and uh, kind of fit the bill. So I, I think I bought two packs of these. Um, but my English pints are IKEAs. Uh, I think my Pilsner glasses are IKEA as well. Um, I have some other glassware too that's not IKEA, but. Ah, uh, do you chill your glasses? John, you no. want to take this one? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. 
Okay, so really quick. Video one. Yeah, I think it was video one. It was, it was. video one. It was. Video one, if you've never seen, that's why I have my channel. I might have to redo that video just for so. better camera work and everything. I think so. The reason you don't want to chill your glasses, you're going to see this a lot of times in dive bars and everything like that, mm -hmm. for one. Okay, how often do you think you clean your freezer? Is it always sanitary? No, you probably also have a bunch of food in there meat some some peas or something else right some popsicles for your kids well when you freeze your glassware especially if it's even what you say is clean probably still has some moisture on it all of those particles are going to freeze onto your glass and then it's going to have that stinkiness of whatever is in your freezer that's that cool. bag of ice you just tossed in there, exactly. uh, which which, by the way, I took it out of the freezer and and before I even broke it on the floor, the it's it started uh, condensing in in the uh, in, in our garage. And all of a sudden there's like dirt dripping off of the bag. Yeah. And exactly. that's what materializes on your glass when you put it in a freezer or even worse spritz it and then put it in the freezer so yeah, you get that it, frosted glass yeah you don't you don't want that so when you go you do that at your house or a bar you don't know how often they clean that freezer now Overwatch, this like, freezer is clean it has only ever had water in it <laughs> yeah so so there's that second two crystallization on glassware causes um uh uh, uh nucleization in beer causing it to foam over the biggest thing that jeff always complains about my pores of being over pores well guess what it's going to explode even more and so that's the problem so you're already releasing more co2 out of your beer and there's always going to be a little bit of ice so technically you're watering it down as a third thing yeah yeah but technically ever so, so slightly ever so slight so if you wanted to go with three points those are the three points. The two mm -hmm. are the big major ones. Please don't do that. Your best option, honestly, get get a clean glass set, put it in your washer, but before you use it, just go rinse the glassware. If you can, get a little bottle like this, water and star sand, like a, a drop of star sand will last you probably a month. Spray, spray, boom, good to go. Yep. You'll have crystal clear glassware none of that bubbles on the side if you see bubbles on the side of a glassware yep. with beer that means there's dirt in the glass yeah see my glass how there's no nucleation sites on the side it's because the yeah. glass is smooth which means there's no impurities on the glassware yeah if it, if it, if if someone pours you a seven up and it's bubbling from here that glass is dirty mm -hmm. yes or cracked there's that too yeah. Now they do now make etched glassware, which but should be bubbling from the center. From the center not, in not the bottom. The yes. Yeah. And that is for aromatics. So it's always constantly releasing aromatics. So when you go yeah. to sniff it or drink it on your right here, that is you're starting the beverage experience. That works for sodas, carbonated waters, beers, etc. This is such a good, good starter mid-level everyday drinker kind of ipa yeah i just gotta say that i also didn't realize that this isn't just a 16 ounces it's a uh 20 one one point three point two so it's a yeah, 21 19, 19, 19, 19 yeah 19 which means i get to start over again <laughs> no <laughs> i like those cans they're they're the, they're the skinny 22s <laughs> yes essentially yeah <laughs> they're as wide as a 12 but taller than a pint Yes, exactly. It's an interesting can of like, okay, who came up with that concept? Yeah, like, to... <laughs> whatever. So. I don't mind. No, don't mind it. But cool. All right, what did we have next? Next Apple's up, new. Apple News. Actually, this is uh, not just Apple News. This is on MacRumors.com, but this uh, this was a much bigger deal than just Apple. Um, it did affect Apple, but kind of like tangently to everything else. Um, so does everyone remember maybe about, gosh, when was that? Mid 2020, early 2020, like spring 2020, like, um, like middle of lockdown 2020. I, I remember this, this thing. Yeah. Right. Um, so there were 
tons and tons of, of posts on Twitter by verified celebrity and company accounts saying the following. We are giving back to our community. We support Bitcoin and we believe you should too. All Bitcoin sent to our address below will be sent back to you and doubled. So reverse Nigerian prints, if, if anyone's familiar with yeah, the scams. That, that. <laughs> we need money so we can release the millions of dollars that have been left by your great, great uncle who, yeah. Um, Money doesn't cost money to send if there's money that you're sending. They'll just take it out of that. Like, you you wire transfer a million dollars, there's a $300 transfer fee. Guess where it comes out of? You don't write the bank a check for $300, they just take it out of the million that they're transferring. It's how transfers work. But I, I digress. Uh... So, and then only going on for the next 30 minutes, add a sense of urgency to your mark. So, so it, it bypasses the, the critical thinking section of their brain into, I'm going to get rich quick, or I'm going to like, bah. um, however, there were a couple hundred accounts that sent out like the same message within the, within like two hours of each other. Yeah. Apple happened to be one of them. Uh, apparently... All of this was done by a single 22-year-old UK citizen. One guy <laughs> broke into like 200 accounts, including like Elon Musk. Yeah, that uh, was a big deal. Yeah, uh, Apple, Amazon, Tim Sweeney. Uh, like go down the list of the who's who of Twitter and he had them send this message with his Bitcoin address. Yeah. No, it, it was, yeah. yeah, I think, I think if you go back to last year, I think we did talk about this. Yes, we did. Uh, I'm almost positive. Uh, but yeah, at that time we didn't know it was one person maybe, but yeah, that it's kind of pretty impressive for a 22 year old. We knew it was a hacker group. We didn't know it was one person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't often give like I'm all about giving people their fair due and what I will say to this is you damn dirty thief but bravo <laughs> bravo <laughs> you know what once you get out of jail I probably have a job for you right <laughs> right you know that that is the type of person like uh the catch me if you can, like, I, I, I want to hire him. I want to yeah. know how he did it. This, this I, is a Frank Abagnale situation. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah. So it, it'll, you be will guy. never beat me in trivia, John. How, like <laughs> every time you try, I will always beat you to the name. Well, you'll have beat me to the name. I have the reference, but I'm like, oh, yeah. what's, the, what's the name? What's the name? It's like, there's a, the reference. And yeah. <laughs> See, that's why we make a good team, though. I'll, like, we'll be in trivia. I'm like, Jeff, Jeff, it's that one thing. Oh, yeah. I got the name. Oh, Kevin Mitnick. Yes. Yeah, yeah I got that. Like, yeah, but By the way, me. who's Kevin Mitnick? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was the cyber version of Frank, of, uh, Frank Abagnale. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, in fact, uh, he went to prison. He also then later worked for the FBI, and now he owns a uh, an IT security business in which he will fish your company for you. Uh, he does a lot of consulting for IT security. Oh, cool. But yeah, Kevin Mitnick, look him up. Uh, there's actually a uh, like a docudrama movie about Kevin Mitnick that's actually pretty good. Uh, called Operation Takedown. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kevin Mitnick can call a nuke strike from a payphone. Um, allegedly at one time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> My boss has a card from Kevin Mitnick. That's pretty cool. Like, that's one business card I, I would love to have. Is like, Kevin, hey, yeah, call me about that thing. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> yes like I just want that business card <laughs> what's a payphone oh <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Uh, so parties involved into the hacking include Apple, Elon Musk, Joe Biden, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and more. Tweets were sent out from these accounts soliciting Bitcoin and scammers received more than $100,000 worth. Uh, and that was 2020 Bitcoin. That was pre, uh, pre-pandemic. pre Pre-spike, yeah. Pre-spike, yeah. That was like 20K Bitcoin, not, not 50K Bitcoin. So... Well, I don't know how much he actually got to keep. Uh, probably none of it at this point. Mm-hmm. Unless he took it out and, you know, spent it. LeVar Burton hosting Jeopardy match between those two. Oh, God. Oh, uh, well, again. That is Jeff, geek Jeff, overload right there. Jeff, Jeff will win because of the name. Now, if it's more like, yeah, give me the, the variant of it. It's like, oh, that one thing, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay, that, that counts. Yeah. Okay. Then it might be fair play, but but if it's going it, it, down to hey John, specific, the answer would still be who is Kevin Mitnick? Well, yes, exactly. Well, if it was that one guy who hacked stuff, yeah, uh, blah blah blah. And if if that was technically in the rules, then it I have a chance. If it, <laughs> if it's I need specifics, John, then... it doesn't count if you go wait 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 yeah that guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That was the guy I was going to. I say. heard of him. Right. Yeah, he's got that uh, Netflix special, right? Yeah, yeah. that guy. Uh, I, I get three and a half I'll points. Ta- I'll take what's his name for 800, please. <laughs> that would be a great topic. <laughs> <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> yeah, take what's his name. Bling. Uh, yes. All right. Uh... Audacity's new owners, Muse Group, is uh, under a little bit of fire. And this one is different than the the story we talked about two weeks ago, uh, but is in another fight with the open source community about something else other than Audacity. Um, So for those that don't know, Audacity is a audio editing program that is open source, open license. You can do whatever you want to it. Um, and it's probably one of the most well-known and well-used audio editing pieces of software, recording pieces of software that's in the industry. Um, there's Adobe Audition and there, there's a whole bunch of other professional variants. But uh, as far as an open source free, this is this is it. This is their GIMP. This is DaVinci Resolve. This is, this is the thing that... Uh, that people use and claim, yeah, we have exactly the same software that everyone else does. Like who uses Adobe Audition anyway? Uh, I do because they have this awesome remix feature that I can play it a song and it'll remix it to the length of the video that I have, which is why all my videos always end with the music ending. Like, isn't it great? (laughs) Thanks, Peter McKinnon. There's some more trivia for you. Uh, so anyway, uh, two weeks ago, Audacity ended up in some hot water because of some new telemetrics that they were introducing. Uh, telemetry metrics, sorry, telemetrics, that's weird. Uh, telemetry that they were introducing into the software that they're spying on you with open source software. No, they're collecting data about their own system so they know how you effed it up. Like that's that's how software improves. Um, totally reasonable. And it was opt in, not opt out. So you had to opt into the the program and they didn't collect anything that was personally identifiable. So I don't know what everyone was upset about. Um, anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, their new owner, News, yeah, Muse Group, uh, is in the news again with the open source community. And this time for a takedown request of one of the forks of another piece of software that they own, and that is MuseScore. Uh, so to catch everyone up, MuseScore is a piece of software that is open source, open platform, and GPL v3 licensed. That's going to come up later. Uh, mm-hmm. The software itself is a sheet music uh, rendering software. Uh, so you can write, compose, share, do whatever you want with sheet music, and it is open source, readily available, and accessible. Um, it's a great piece of software. I've used it myself before. Yeah. Um, so 
what is the big deal this time? Is this one spying on you? No, something even worse. Uh, because of that GPL v3 license, that means it is open source, forkable, and doesn't have to be attributed via, uh, uh, doesn't have to have any attributions and you can readily distribute your forks. So again, that'll come up later. Um, essentially what happened was uh, a user by the name of Xmander forked the code for MuseScore. Well, MuseScore is kind of two different animals. In, in one piece, they have the animal that is MuseScore, the application. That is the open source, open software, music notation scriber software. In the other hand, they have MuseScore.com, which is a repository for uh, notated music, for sheet music. Now, as you might have gathered, a lot of sheet music doesn't have GPL v3 licensing. It's Creative Commons at best, where you can download Mozart's Fifth and you can play it to your heart's content, or it's full commercial or anything in between, where full commercial, you have to pay rights for distribution, uh, playback, editing, attribution, etc., and every step there in between. Um, so what's the beef with the coder Xmander? Great question. Glad you asked. Uh, oh, X, you're X, Xmander forked, uh, the main code for MuseScore and created a program on GitHub called MuseScore Downloader. Now to download music from MuseScore, you have to have a subscription <coughs> with MuseScore.com. Seems reasonable, right? Well, the problem is because MuseScore itself, the software, had a GPL v3 license and was open source, non, no attribution, no, and, and free distribution. Um, that included the method in which they authenticated with MuseScore.com to download the music. And so Xmander, Xmander, I guess you can call him, uh, wrote a client based on that software that could just download all the sheet music for free. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, now, here's the deal. Here, here's here's the, the crux of this situation. Um, Muse, Muse Group, has tried to take down Xander's fork. Xmander's fork, not Xander, Xmander. Uh, Xmander's fork of the software for copyright and trademark violations. There's two main problems with that. Number yeah. one, the software is open source with a GPL v3 license, which means no attribution and free distribution. Yep. You license it that way. You gave me rights to everything therein. Uh, number two, Xmander is not himself distributing copyrighted content. Remember, this is being downloaded from MuseScore.com and done with open source technology. Yeah. It's, so, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it is very interesting because, yeah, like you said, it's open source. And so essentially, X Sander, Mander, whatever we want to call him, um, he's literally just basically for himself, changed a line or two, let's just theoretically call right. it that, some code. And the authenticity to go online and however it connects says, hey, you're good to go because they gave him the rights to that original free software, which is free for him to do whatever he technically wants to do with it. Including modify the code to download and bypass authentication for the paid service. Exactly. Totally within his rights. Totally within his rights. Is Maybe amazing? not morally right. Yeah. Uh, it really kind of comes down to, of. Uh, it sounds like they're just upset and they didn't know it and they have egg on their face. They have egg on their face. And they're um, trying to save face. By saying you're wrong and just you you know shouting who can shout the loudest? Yeah, you know um, what I will say 
is Xmander. This is a morally wrong endeavor. I'll I'll say that straight up. Um, you know there's a pay gate between you and the sheet music that you are downloading with your client. You understand that. You advertise as such. However, because you have done so with open source GPL v3 uh, licensure, it, it's kind of hard to say he's in the wrong either. Yeah. Now, if you are Muse Group, number one, you have egg on your face because holy crap, someone just bypassed all of your authentication and, and paywall and downloaded everything for free using your own source code. But you're the one who open sourced that software. Um, secondly, there's there's some there's some dissent with the open source community in some threats that were lobbied towards Xmander, and this is where the story gets a little more interesting. So Xmander is a Chinese national living in the United States who has been vocally opposed to the Communist Party of China. Uh, loudly vocally opposed. Um, in their first email res er, their first email complaint to Xmander about his software, they threatened to get both lawyers, legal, and the Chinese government involved <laughs> in pursuing this particular infringement. Now, from a legal standpoint, this gets really interesting really quick. Because remember, this is open source code. This is open source code pointed directly at the original source, just simply with a moral hiccup in the middle, but yeah. morals don't define laws. No, this is, again, this is not like a, a torrenting issue of like, right. I paid for this system, but then I'm uploading it for everyone to grab. No, 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 this he's, is not He's that. downloading it direct from source. Direct from source because he, he found the back door that they left unlocked and open direct from source with their own code yeah that's i mean that's the important bit here is remember this is their code running on their server that he's simply downloading from and there's a certain thing when it comes to like data release where if it was a plain text file on on a server and you happen to access it you have no moral obligations not to look. Um, now, if it were credit card numbers, if you use those credit card numbers, that would be criminal. But looking at those credit card numbers, if they are open to the public, there's no crime in that. So downloading sheet music that was from an open source source, there's no crime in that. Uh, so this one's going to be interesting as as it develops a little further. Because on one hand, you have the Muse Group, which obviously does not own the licensure to the one million plus scores of sheet music yeah. that they that they have within their database. Uh, I mean, like I said, a lot of these are full commercial. Some of them are Creative Commons, but with attribution or, or some other things. And then there's varying levels in between. Um, they certainly can't just give away that you know those documents. Um, there are license holders for all of those things. Uh, on the other hand, you have the Muse Group, who also GPL'd their their source code and allowed the download to happen. And now they're mad that the door's been unlocked and they don't know if they can close it again unless they rejigger their authentication system on the server side. And then that's the thing um, too, they have to rejigger on their side, not the software side, <coughs> because again, Audacity, right. like we were talking about, and, and just like this software, it, it's free to download, and you can download different versions. So mm -hmm. basically every version out there now has that back door to it. It's the yep. authenticity uh, side on their server side that they have to change, yeah. which uh, again, I don't. we don't know how they're doing it, we don't know what they're doing, I don't see it too big as an issue, but honestly, I would have almost <laughs> approached this as, hey, thank you. Here's 
five ten thousand dollars we're gonna yep. fix this right now please don't publish it you know or, uh, or, or like that. sergey says please play authentication cord to continue <laughs> yeah <laughs> So I mean, I, play a I think, C major with an Og six, like like you were saying with their uh, first initial letter going really hardcore with it. Yeah, I I think that was a bad form. It um, it was a bad PR move in general uh, yeah. because they they not only, I mean, you can send a legal threat. You you can you can send. Um, we understand what you did. You used our code in bad faith. And while it's not necessarily illegal, we will be taking steps to prevent this from being able to continue in the future. Or like there is legalese that you can put into a notice that yeah. says you used open, our own open source code to access our database. Yeah. And e even, we understand uh, that it was open source, but at the same time, you understood that it was behind a paywall and we're not going to take your firstborn from you, but you need to stop doing that. And we're going to take our own steps in to mitigate the situation. What they, they did was they said, not only are we going to sue you, we're going to deport you back to China where you will likely go to jail for the rest of your life because of your statements against the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. where that's where this all comes together. Yeah, I know. They shouldn't have done that. I should have said something like, hey, we know this is bad. You did it wrong. I'll tell you what. We'll give you a great, you know, uh, bug finder fee, um, mm -hmm. and we'll, we're going to fix this. Right. Thank you for your service. Something along that line, you know. Here, here's twenty thousand dollars for you, kind of like showing us a flaw in our methodology or source code yeah. or whatever else. Um, but uh, we need you to take this down. This is your finder fee for the bug. This is, you know, payment yeah. to to purchase your fork from or you. Or we'll, we'll pay you hence when you take this down. You know, something along that line. Ooh, my 3D print finished and it looks wonderful from the side of the room. <laughs> I was like, oh, is that, is that how he would have acted? I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's not necessarily from like a moral standpoint that Muse Group is in trouble right now as far as like the, like, neither side is 100% in the wrong here. And that's that's the, the real juicy part of this whole situation is that Xmander is not in the wrong from forking the code and developing his own version. He's probably morally in the wrong for releasing a downloader for all sheet music and possibly legally because he knowingly bypassed an authentication method. And depending on jurisdiction, that could be a legal offense. Yeah. Um, uh, unauthorized access to a computer system is a legal uh, uh, offense. Um, it all depends on how the law is applied, but there is legalese for there was a paywall just because there was a gate and you could step over it doesn't mean you didn't have to swipe your badge and pay to get on the train. Yeah. Like j jumping a turnstile is still a crime, even though you could step over the gate. Like, although Bender would, uh, would beg to disagree. Yeah. Uh, that's actually a pretty good analogy right there. Well, that's actually, well, it's a good analogy. Not necessarily because it is, was again, <laughs> open source. It was open source code, but it there's also the. Uh, I wonder. Yeah, I mean, um, technically, would this what limits? Could... What limits does the train station have to go to? Like, say, I was getting on the BART in San Francisco. Um, what limits does a does the subway station have to go through? to make sure that I know it is a paid system only and you can only get on it for so many stops and you have to buy a ticket and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, because there's signage, there's a turnstile, which does stop your forward movement. And a lot of them are monitored by, by staff. Now I'm six foot five. I can step over a lot of crap. Yeah. Um, like no problem at all. Uh, I can leap over even more things than most people can. But just because I can doesn't mean I am morally or legally right to do so. And jumping over a turnstile is still a crime. It is, but there it would also be like them saying, 
yeah, you you can jump over this, or here's this turnstile. But you know what? You can also tinker with this turnstile as much as you want. You can tinker with it, but understand that what's on the other side of this is a paid service. Yeah. And that yeah. was also patently clear, and he also advertised as such, download any sheet music from musecore.com for free. Yeah. So, he so knew I, what he was doing. Then that, that's the bad part. Right. right. And really so right he there. advertised that GitHub repo as yeah. such. And so he knew morally, if not legally, what he was doing. You know, this um, will be interesting. I think I think they're still in the I think they're in the right, but again, the way they went about it. The way they went and, about it and and the threats of nationality. Yeah, is, and, that, that, and then still uh, at the same time it's like, look, this guy really exposed you really bad. And technically he has probably a decent argument. He probably still has a decent argument. Um Morally, I'm sorry. Join the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> I took that to I minimized the chat. No, no, no. Uh, oh, so uh, just a typo that became a great joke. <laughs> <laughs> join the Discord. It's only a dollar a month. You can know what I'm laughing about. And join us for the after party. If you've never seen Craft Computing After Dark, Gosh. buckle up. Yes. Oh, no, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. I see it now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Retzel, you the man. <laughs> All right. So it's a complicated situation with both legal and moral leeway on both sides of this equation. And I'm actually pretty interested to see how this one will play out. Um, uh, now, I will say, uh, it was Ars Technica. Uh, they summed up their article pretty well. Uh, it seems like Ray, who is uh, Xmander, uh, statements could be taken exactly at face value as earnest if ham hand if ham handed. Uh, concerned about a bright young developer's future. Sorry, Ray is the uh, security guy for Muse Group. Sorry. Um, but anyway, they, they go on to explain a couple of other things. Um, uh, uh, seem ham handed concern about a bright young developer's future and the desire to avoid hurting him in the process of exercising Muse Group's own necessary due diligence. That is preventing the download of, uh, sheet music from their website without authentication and a paywall. Assuming that's the case, Muse Group's next acquisition should probably be a public relations firm instead of a software project, end quote. Um, and I would fully agree with that. Yep. Um, because you've had egg on your face. Now, for those who have never dealt with the open source community, um, they're a fickle bunch. I'll just say that. Um, what were and we I'll, talking about Linux? And, and I'll and I'll also double down on the fact that Wine is an emulator. Unless you were around in 1990 when the whole Wine thing came onto the scene, in which emulation was very frowned upon by con by the console industry, namely Nintendo and Atari, because of their ongoing war, uh, as well as Sega was also in the mix. Um, Wine wanted to do everything to distance themselves from the term emulator, um, and. When I say wine is kind of an emulator, it means just that. It's kind of an emulator and it's kind of a translation layer. But if you look at compatibility layer and the actual definition of that, it says emulation. So I, I, I love that. Well, they said wine is not an emulator. Yeah, I know that's the name of it. That doesn't make it true. Yeah. So it emulates some things of sorts. There you go. Anyway, yes, uh, Muse, hire a PR guy because you've done stepped in it twice with the open source community and they're not all that happy right now. Yeah. So. Uh, John, this beer can teach you to play guitar? It sure can, Jeff. And actually, this is pretty cool. I, I really like this. This is from Single Cut. Uh, I've actually had a few of their beers. You can actually, uh, if you are on Tavor, they do uh, uh, have single cut. But it's a brand new IPA that they're releasing called Notes. 
And the very cool thing about this is it comes with its own pick. And so you can actually get a guitar pick attached to your beer can that you can pluck off. And each can uh, will show you a basic guitar note. Now, Jeff, you and I and Rhett, so 75% of the Talking Heads hosts are musicians. Yes. And no everyone but Steve. Everyone but Steve. And Steve's, Steve's a huge karaoke guy, so if karaoke is a musician, so then we all are. Um, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, but in a in a band, he's backup vocals at best. Like, <laughs> like he's the umbop to your. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the cool thing, I, I thought this was kind of a cool thing. Of mm -hmm. um, just it's it's your standard West Coast IPA, nothing big, nothing heavy. Yeah. But they're teaching basically people like a, a new skill, something just it's another attraction, and I really like the fact that it comes with this custom made pick. Uh, that you can pull off of the tab to pop your beer open and now you have a guitar pick and then they'll teach you some of the basic open chord major notes except yep. for e minor um <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought that you know after this you can play green basically any green day you can play wonder wall you'll be a hit <laughs> at every campfire you'll be the guy that they want to shoot because you're like hang on hang on it's unconceivable. No, wait, that's not the lyrics. Hang on a second. Uh, uh, You're today, unbelievable. Today. Ow! <laughs> and then someone's going to be like, play Stairway to Heaven! And then you'll be like, fuck, you screw you! <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, I thought, this is kind of neat. I Look into was... the sky to save me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, Foo Fighters, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. But, uh... You can always bring, thought... him, bring him back with Dave Grohl. So. There, I love Dave Grohl. Um, but so I thought this was a pretty cool, interesting thing that because we talk about a lot of guitar or, or uh, a beer stuff, they're trying to be in different communities. And this is a craft beer community and they're trying to give people kind of a, a skill or a hobby. And I know guitar playing can have a bad niche of the C, D, G, E minor because it's so basic chords, but that's where you start off at. There are plenty of dads or or, or 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 girls or anything just trying to like learn something new and here's kind of a new skill i mean mm -hmm. not everyone is that google proficient and just being like i don't know what to do it's just i know it's a niche i knew it was a niche but i just thought this was kind of a cool thing but no i i like that i, I like the cans just going here's a c here's a g here's an e minor here's a here's a d, here's a d. like now what would have been really cool is if they, they put tabs on the other side that's exactly yes, yeah exactly here's this song you can play here are four songs so you, if you collect all four you learn all four chords and here's four songs you can play there you go because who been... doesn't love a four chord song i mean what was that there's that comedian group that did like the three chords. axis of awesome axis of awesome the four chord like, songs yeah yep so you could literally play all of those songs. See, yep. again, the uh, trivia stuff. I know, hey, you know that one thing? And then Jeff knows the name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that comedy group. Yeah, Axis of Awesome, the Australian group. Yeah. Yeah. So if you haven't seen that video, it's a great video. It's been around for like, what, 10 years now? Yes. Um, what, was, what I love about that video is... Hit one of his only jokes that he just says. So the video is full of jokes and, and different songs that they're riffing on and whatnot. Um, but uh, he goes, we're the Axis of Awesome. We've been on tour for 30 years now. And like the lead singer is like 32. And he gets no laughs ever. And it just ticks me off. <laughs> because yeah, we, we've been a band for 30 years now. And you know, we've never written our own four chord song. And no one ever laughs at that. It's like, Dude's 32. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I don't think I laugh either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so, but... It, but it, I see you and I respect I, it. Yeah. But again, too, of like... I think, I think most people trying to dive into learning uh, the guitar because it's probably the most common instrument everyone tries to learn, right? I mean, yeah. and probably fails dramatically but there's always that big concept of 
these songs are so complicated. How did that artist write this? And, and this song's got so many chords. It's like, no, 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 no. It's actually three or four chords. Break it You'd down. be surprised that 99% of all of your favorite songs are are, are not only so so there's also a newer revelation as well not only are 90 percent of your songs that you listen to on the radio the same four chords the vocalists also hover on the two yeah oh yeah no it's 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 easy and actually even if you go beyond that it's the pattern of their uh vibratos and how they're singing it are all yep. the same too there, there's a pattern that sells. There's a what's called the, the formula. The formula, yes. Yes. And so you will all, isn't it odd? Oh, you always hear the oohs and ahs and bop, bop, bop. Again, we make fun of the oom bop, but mm -bop. there's a reason ba -ba that kind of catches in your head. Yeah, I think they could have probably even have done a joke of how many songs have yeah, oom bop yeah. or yeah, 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 or, you know, yeah. um, stuff like that in it. Yes. And it's catchy because it's repeatable <clears throat> it's repeatable and it's a pattern we know yeah. whether you know you know it or not <laughs> you know it you know it yeah yep so but I, I like this about that if i can get four of these i'd love to review all four of these oh, I mean, they're be all great. the same beer but i'd love to review like have all four. i'd love to have the set it, it yeah, would be i'd love great. to have the set and and the the idea that this pick breaks off after you crack it and it's cool it's not it's not the tab it's attached to the tab oh nice which is kind of a cool thing so there's a video uh commercial in the link so check that out if you like that stuff. if someone sees this beer uh please grab a whale pod and send it to me yes Please, please, please. We'll, I'll, I'll even pay for it. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for that one because I want to, I want to see these cans. I, I, yeah. I want these cans. So there are, there are certain cans I like to just collect. Like there, <laughs> I'll, if I like it, I'll just buy two of them. One to yeah. drink, but I, I want to keep that can. And yep. I don't like empties. I like it to still be. This is the liquid that was still inside. Yes. You know, I, I don't want to collect. John has can. beers from the forties. I do. <laughs> 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 I don't say that sarcastically. John this has is, beer from the seven, four T's. This is like 68. This is 72. <laughs> yeah. Within uh, arm's and, reach. And I drank these. I didn't, I didn't like, oh, these are No, I drank them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I love that. Um, so, Jeff, early 90s. You were, uh, I mean, I think the early 90s. Actually, I was the pinnacle of movies. Yes, uh, you had what RoboCop in '88. You had Terminator. You had uh, Last Action Hero. Yep. You had uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hard, the Die Hard series. Die Hard series. Yeah. Uh, uh, the what, Terminator what? Two. Yep. Uh, a lot of great movies. Stuff. A lot, lot of great. A lot of great movies. I think because of all <laughs> practical effects. Yeah. And mixed with the revolution of some computer stuff, not where that 2000 era where they're like, oh, we got this computer thing and we'll throw we'll throw CG into everything. George Lucas and, going, CG everything. Yeah, exactly. None of that. Yeah. Um, I think one of our, uh, it's got to be, it's got to be a, not one of ours, but a, a classic. Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers. Uh, for those who don't know, Super Mario Brothers had a theatrical release of a live action movie uh, starring, gosh, I had the list here, uh, Bob Hoskins, uh, uh, John Leguizamo as yeah. Luigi, as, as Luigi Mario. Yeah, there's Mario Mario and Luigi, and Luigi Mario. Mario. Right. Um, anyway. There, there's a Super Mario Brothers movie Dustin from Hoffman as, as King Koopa. Dustin Hoffman, that's right. Um, and oh, uh, Fisher Stevens was in that too as Iggy. Yes, he was. Yes, yes. he didn't <laughs> play um, an Indian. Right, <laughs> but, but still in colored face for some reason. <laughs> um, anyway, there, there is a Mario Brothers movie from. 1986 that is getting a full 4k remaster and thank god it is not that one <laughs> uh in fact it was a japanese only release 
Thank you. Uh, that is getting a, quote, painstakingly restored 4K remaster. Um, <clears throat> so this is the Super Mario Brothers and the great mission to save Princess Peach. Uh, it is an animated film only shown uh, in Japan, only ever in Japanese. <laughs> Uh, and I guess is like the best animated feature that Nintendo has ever put out. I probably agree to that because now I will say there was the the uh, Super Mario Brothers TV show. Oh, that's horrible! No, no, no. There were like no, no, no. There were like three different TV shows. Well, yeah, there was like the the Zelda. Well, yeah, okay. So, so there was Zelda, which was. Awful. Well, that was, that was and, part of the Mario Hour, the Super and Mario is, Brothers Hour. And 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 I also have Zelda on my Plex. So I have that too. Yes, I, I had to. Too. I had well, to. I, is 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 my my son again? Breath of the Wild. I was like, oh, you know, there's a there's a Zelda cartoon, right? Uh, but then he's like, where's Ganon? Where's this? Okay. And Ganon's uh, the pig. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know what that is. Like, wow, that's weird. Have you? When was the last time you watched it? Uh, more recently than I'd like to admit. Okay, so we watched <laughs> episode one, probably less than three weeks. Probably yeah, three weeks start ago. starts with uh, Link waking up in the tower, and the fairy and wakes him at, up, and he knocks and him. Yeah, locks him up. Yeah, there's a joke in there within the first like three to four minutes of Link looking down at the princess, like, "Well, I I would rather be looking down at you and what you're wearing, Princess Zelda." Right, right, and it's like. My wife, from from like the end of you know our kitchen, was like, "What, what? did that cartoon just say to our yeah. four year old?" <laughs> and and John, if I really hope you said, "Will excuse me, yeah. princess." Well, he then then for like a week, that's all he was saying because <laughs> he thought it was <laughs> hilarious. Oh, that's great. Oh, and it was like oh so. My so the, God. there was the Zelda cartoon, which was absolute garbage. Oh, uh, go look it up if you don't believe me. But I, I take no responsibility over the time you will never get back. No, um, so there was the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, yeah. which was part live action and part animated. And the animated wasn't all that bad, but the live action was horrible. It was like buckle up. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was like. 50 year old flirting with a, a, a 19 year old girl. Yeah. And, and, and they were like long curly haired weird guys. Uh, yeah. And... It was, it was, it was bad. Yeah. Uh, there was the new adventures of super Mario yeah. and there was also the super Mario brothers three, uh, yeah. show, which, so there were three different Mario Brothers television shows they syndicated in the early 90s. Kind of similar, but. Yeah. yeah. Mario Brothers 3, not bad. It, it, no. it, it fit within the universe. It, it, it was fairly well written, yeah, they, well animated. They had like, um, uh, Bowser's flying ships in there. Yeah. They, they, they had, was, they had all of Bowser's minions and. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it made a bit more sense within the world, <laughs> but the first two were like, none of the characters even look drawn like what's in the video game yeah and so it was just weird and yeah it, <laughs> i know it was it was bad i was like there was one episode we watched i think where uh king koopa goes into the fountain of youth and then de-ages luigi and princess peach and mario has to help with baby peach it was just horrible. yeah there's it some like, weird stuff um Anyway, yeah, the uh, this is a what they call a painstaking re uh, remastering of uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie, uh, the quest to save Princess Peach, uh, which has cost them in the neighborhood of twenty thousand dollars to do the restoration on. Like they're they're all in, they're invested in this thing. Um, so it was only ever released in Japan, if I remember correctly. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a Mario Brothers cartoon being re-released I mean, in 4K. Why not? Why not at least spend that extra 10K then get some, you know, American voice actors or something? Because <sighs> even when you watch it, it's still the Japanese audio. 
The uh-huh. drawing is actually looks pretty good. It actually looks better than any of those TV series we're looking oh, yeah. at. Yeah. Um, I, I will say Mario Brothers 3 uh, does a decent job. And in fact, when I was growing up, Mario Brothers 3 was placed in a two hour block uh, with Zelda as well as the MC Hammer cartoon. Oh, gosh. Yes, I remember that one. Yes. Oh, that was bad, too. Gosh. Yep. I, I say, I still say cartoons back then were better than now. Yeah. I, I think back then, I think they were, I don't know. I, I think today's cartoons aren't as, I don't know. There are, there are some pretty good ones. Actually, I should take that back. There, yeah, there's some good ones now, too. Um, oh. Yeah. Big Big Spoon, $5 donation. Waste of money chat. Hashtag not super chat. Uh, well. Well, oh, did you know? Did you know Big Big Spoon is a famous TikToker? I did not know. I think he's got like 20,000 followers. Sooner he's going to be bigger than Bite My Bits. I know. I think he is bigger than Bite My Bits on TikTok. Certainly on TikTok. Yes, for sure. He's he, everyone loves seeing because I went I went on there I think yesterday and <laughs> sorry sorry calling. sorry uh, Andrew says Super Show looked like Ron Jeremy in a Mario costume oh it does it does it's horrible <laughs> and on that note I think we're gonna call it a show because it's let's ten thirteen it oh god <laughs> I don't yeah, think I can top that let's do that let's call it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching episode 193 here on Talking Heads. Join us every Wednesday night on Craft Computing for the latest in beer and tech news. If you want to join the super secret chat and the even more super secret after party, think about joining the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are both down in the video description. You'll get a chat with myself, John, Rhett, Steve, all the hosts from Talking Heads, and take part in the ever-growing and awesome community that hangs out there. Uh, John, anything to promote? Any subscribe to Hops and Brews if you like any of the little bit of beer content that we talked about, or the the uh, ice glass. If you have any of that type of comment, um, just hit me up on there, and uh, yeah, check it out. If you want to, <laughs> if you feel like it, if you feel like it. Do so. Go subscribe to Hops and Brews. Uh, you can check out his most famous episodes, which feature me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You want to talk about least viewed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and yeah, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, as always, we'll see you right here on every single Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time for the latest in beer and tech news. We'll see you. Yeah. Bye all. <laughs>